to the club because you're that kind of nerd. Welcome, everyone, to That Kind of Nerds podcast, a show that tells you what's ah! going up in the nerdy world. What the fuck was Sorry. that? Nothing. What the hell was that? Nothing. No, you have to. No, I'm not going. I'm not saying a lick about shit <laughs> until I know. Just trying to find new ways to fuck with the intro, bro. Which, thank you. I got many text messages about that, by the way. <laughs> Screaming like you saw a spider is is one of the ways. That one that one was all me. That one was me. But that you was like a got suggestion. up out of your chair. I'm curating the suggestions. I feel still. like you're you're selling this as a bit for to cover something that happened in real life. Like did a mouse run by you or something? No, I don't scream like that, bro. No, you don't. I I mean so no. Okay. What I'm hearing is that I should take some acting classes because I fooled you. That's what I'm hearing. Well, if you fooled me, do you need to take acting classes? That means that you you fooled me. Do you need to go study well, more? Well, no, no, I mean, but that's the bedrock, right? Then you just got to fine-tune your art. I mean, come on, even Robert Downey Jr. takes even Robert Downey Jr. takes acting Well, classes. obviously, those are, are, are paying off. Uh, so I am uh, joined by the wonderful, fantastical, and apparently uh, now going to get headshots and shop around his resume, Brian Thornton. Oh, do I say hey? Okay. Uh, I say something. I don't, I don't think I've ever said hey. I'm not a hay guy. I was always told hay is for horses. You don't say hay? Yeah. And I am. And, and like text message, I say hey. Very disarming. Josh hey. cannot be here for this episode. Uh, and man, do, do we have a lot to talk about. There is a lot that happened in the nerdy world, but I do want to start off by talking about uh, probably the biggest thing that happened to the two of us in the nerdy world, and that is the drop of Eternals, a new MCU movie, Brian. We got a new MCU movie. Uh, well, I kind of want to talk about we it, did. review it a little bit casually Exciting. between us. Um, I I love to first get your your first impressions for that movie for Eternals for Eternals. Well, I mean, you know them because I was texting you. Um, I I I, I disappointment. Let, let's just, I'll just sum it up in one word and just say I, I was very disappointed. Um, in Eternals. Yeah, I, my first impression. You was, asked for first impressions. No, That's no, all I, I'm I, you. first impression. I I I I was bored. I was really bored by this movie. Oh my gosh, it was very boring. Very boring. And, and it was three hours. It was like almost three <laughs> hours of them going, hey, we're the bad guys. Are we the bad guys? I don't feel like I'm a bad guy. I feel like a good guy. Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I am. Am I the villain? I don't think I'm the villain. I, I I think this movie for me was punctuated by what happened after my movie going experience. I saw the Harry Styles reveal. I didn't get to see the the second ending of the post credits because three firemen came into my theater and basically said, "Hey, get out!" And then it was escorted by three. They firemen. were like, "This movie is so bad. I'm going to save you from the credits." It's such a uh, anyway. So I, I was I was no, not able to see the, the post credit scene, but I did see it. Here I, I like to talk about. Uh, I've been talking to people about this movie besides you brian you've been talking to people I besides me did i know crazy i've been That's trying to fair. figure out if uh and and this happens to uh, to me a couple times when i see a couple movies where instead of am i the drama I'm like am i wrong like like am i objectively yeah i i i did that too did i miss I it objectively or, yeah like did i miss the point or was i just being obtuse or did i bring in something that that made me really disappointed from this movie and I was reading different reviews. I mean, from reviewers that I trust. I, I read one from uh, John Negroni. I read it from Dale Merle. I went on Rotten Tomatoes and found a couple of critics that you know are of institutions that I like. And this was not only a very divisive movie, but the thing I came away from from the critics that I do trust was this movie wasn't that good. And I, I don't. And, and Dale Merle said it best. I don't want the MCU to to take this as don't take risks. Don't diversify your cast. Don't hire good directors. Right, and, and that's what I'm afraid of. Right, it, it's it, it's it's n the issues with this movie were not the director, the cast. It really all boiled down to just a, a very boring fucking story. Like yeah. I I know Chloe Zhao had a hand in writing it, right? But there was two other people in that room. Like no one looked at the script, or don't tell me Kevin Feige wasn't involved. No one looked at the script and said. This is just three hours of the same scene over and over again, and with with a couple of eh action scenes right. interspersed in there, and, and and like, is this really what how we want to how we want to go about this? Like, 
the biggest problem for me, I mean, I have a lot of big problems. So here, I want to be very clear. I feel about this movie the way I feel about a lot of DC films. I liked it. That's the analogy that I got from a lot <laughs> but of there is a ton. There is a ton wrong with it. Yes. The worst Marvel movie is better than a thousand other movies I have seen. But this is very much so the worst Marvel movie. And it has nothing to do with the director or the... I, I thought the shots were beautiful, right? Like, Absolutely. Think, you know, freaking Practical stunning Practical locations looking also. Film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stunning looking film with a great cast. In my opinion, an underutilized cast, but a great cast. Um, I don't know why you freaking hire Selma Hayek and Angelina Jolie for a total of, what, 10 minutes? I think Zendaya Maybe? got more screen time in, in Dune collectively than, than they did in that, Eternals. That is ridiculous to me. Yeah. Like, that was going to be my selling point to my wife to go see this movie was Angelina Jolie and Selma Hayek are in it. I'm so happy she didn't come with me because she would have been pissed. Yep. Because not only are they barely in it. What, how many, Angelia talks like four times throughout it, and then we don't even get like there's this whole like oh she's so badass really like she's supposed to be like the goddess of war right and right. like we get one scene with her like actually fighting yeah. in it and the person who was the most entertaining who I had the most connection with fucks off for the last <laughs> third of the movie <laughs> yep third act Camille, Camille Nanjiani, Nanjiani just- was the best for part of that film yes. And then when when the the big reveal happens, which I saw fucking coming, he was like, yeah, I'm just going to go away. And then like, okay, that's fine. But you have him come back for the last battle. Like you have something. Because then like, and then on top of that, the ending and him being taken by the Celestial doesn't make any sense. He had nothing to do with it. That's right. He just abstained. You're you're all very much like this movie. You're jumping around and... (laughs) Well, no, no, no. The analogy you just gave, the analogy you just gave was, was pretty, that from what I've, again, I talked to other people about this, just trying to see if I was wrong. And, and the, the summary came down to, what if Marvel made a DC movie? That's what this is. This is the, this is like Justice League, but with the Marvel on it. There's too many people in it. The, 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 the movie story jumps around time to time to time with lines that could have been, uh, with scenes that could have been lines of dialogue. With scenes that could have been lines. Just stopping just, the momentum yeah. of the movie in its tracks to tell you something that could have just been delivered. I didn't say this to you. I said it to someone else. I'm like, if you're going to do a movie like this where you're essentially going to be like, let's get the band back together, you have got to move. Like, you've got yeah. to be like, now we're here, now we're here, now we're here. Real quick, like quick snippets. You can't live in each location for 15, 20 minutes. It gets fucking boring especially if the if it's the same scene oh hey by the way this person's dead i found out where the bad guys i know crazy right i have a plan it's crazy can you help us no i don't want to help you but you should but okay but we're family all right fine we're family which is another thing that i did not fucking buy about this film that was the 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 the, the real downfall of this film is that their entire motivations for doing what they're supposed to be doing is twofold. They love the planet and they love each other. And I didn't get that. No, me neither. I don't maybe I'm missing something, but like everybody's motivation, like there's a scene um with when Cam- when Camille, uh what, what was his character's name? Kinda? I, think I, his name I, was Kinda. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think you're right, yeah. Um where he's like, Oh, but I got this film, like I got like a movie to do, which is way more important than saving the world, like you know, and yeah. like the big thing that spurs him is like, but you said you always go for your family. You're always like there for your family. And I'm like, I don't see a family here. Every single time they are together, they are at each other's throats or they're giving completely flat performances with each other. I don't buy that you like each other. Well, considering like, that Thanksgiving is right around the holiday, Brian, most families do get together and just yell and bicker at each other. The, the other part, too, was... There's a difference, I mean, if you, think you about know this, it. I, I know, I know. I'm just joking. What, they landed on Earth, what, at 500, 500 BC or 500 AD, right? Mesopotamia, Five, right? 500 BC. They'd been on Earth for 7,000 years. Right, but the last time that they were together together was with the Aztecs. And I'll say objectively, right, from Mesopotamia... Uh, Babylonians. The, the Mesopotamia, the Babylonians, Babylonians and then the Aztecs is when they say, you go our separate ways, and what's his face? Okay. Druid goes out and sure. takes them with him, right? That's the sure, last time yeah. that they're all together as a family. That's when 
uh, Ajax says, which Go is what and, 500 BC. Uh, if 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 maybe 1500, 1300. If if we're, I think I think the last time they were together was fifteen or was five seventy five BC, which means and, they have not been around each other for two thousand years. That's my part. They were together for a long time, right? And and long time in the terms of uh, immortal, right? Not that long. I, I mean, really, ideally, if you're immortal from 500 to 1300, not that long. And then from you know 1300 to 2021, also like eh, not a lot. That's not a lot of time you were together. You've been apart almost as long as you've been together. Um, well, it, I mean, it, okay. It, I think our, I think your math's a little wrong. Probably they were together wrong. for five. They were together. They're been, they've been on Earth for seven thousand years. They've only right. been apart for two thousand of that. So for okay. five thousand years, they were together. But my point is this: every time, and you know, <laughs> I thought of you after the third oh. flashback because I'm like, what is this? A fucking season of Arrow? What is going on here? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's all these flashbacks reality. where nothing fucking happens. Nothing happens. And. And it has nothing, nothing to do with what's going on currently. No, nope. I thought of you. I'm like, oh, CJ must love this part. And so, I like, hated every it, one of those. Here's the thing. It, in those flashbacks, that was your moment. If you're going to do those flashbacks, that's your moment to show them, like, getting along as a family and loving yep. each other and all this other trash, right? To build that relationship. And then, like, that way, when you find out, oh, this is something that just split them apart, it hurts, right? And, like, you're like... Oh, well, I mean, it makes sense. Maybe they're reluctant to help each other out. But, like, you didn't get that. Every single flashback was, hey, let's fight a deviant and then let's high five each other, um, in the most impersonal way possible. Like, you know, that guy at work who, like, tries to have a personal relationship with you and just kind of gives you that, like, weak ass high five and you're like, I don't really like that guy. That's what it felt like amongst these groups, right? I'm not saying I work with anybody like that, just for, for the record. I'm just saying, Sure, sure, sure. You know, it, it's it's just there was no relationships. Yeah. Even between the two people, there was supposed to be a relationship okay. between. So which, now, what is his name? Robert Madden. So so Icarus and Circe, right? Were were two that right. had all right. So there were three flashbacks that I remember because I, I I I really have legitimately. Four. I know I remember three because I was really sick technically of five actually. The, Five okay. would have been like the last one. That the was one that works is the one where Circe and Icarus get married and they have the ceremony and they show that they take that picture or they pose for it, whatever. And you can see that Sprite is very not happy with this situation. Right. And you can see the love between Icarus and, and Circe uh, or, or Cersei. I don't know how to say her name. And that's great. I, then, I believe it's Circe. Cer- the, the, no, the one. Oh, I do remember another one that bumped me out. All right. And then the ones that bumped me are. The one where All Ajax and Ajax and I forget his name. I'm so sorry. I don't have my character list of in front of me. They go to uh, Hiroshima. Hiroshima after oh, they yeah, Ajax and Fastos. F- Thank Fastos. you. Uh, stopped momentum in his tracks. And again, I didn't need that. The next one was when they were in uh, when they were in South America at the Aztecs, and they are splitting up, broke up the momentum. And then the final one that was the most egregious to me that just stopped the movie in its goddamn tracks is when you find out that Icarus killed Ajax. It is pull the emergency brake, do a loop, and stop full it, force in this it's movie. It's completely just and like, we'll let's go. explain why. And, and here's the and thing. It's six days. It was six fucking it's, days. It's a six-day flashback. And, and, and Talk like about it. As characters, yeah. don't flash me back six fucking days. You, I don't mind the flashback, but like... In the middle okay, like of the, the, the most the hero sh- part of the movie, to stop it and go back right. six fucking days? Well, if I'm recalling correctly, none of the other characters know it when that flashback happens. It is when Kinda... When they're arguing about whether or not we should kill a Celestial and Kinda goes to Icarus, I will follow you, whatever you're, you're, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. That's when he flashes back. So nothing like – that's the other problem. There's no momentum built. They're just talking. They're just like, hey, should we do this? Are we the bad guys? Yes, we're the bad guys. Maybe we shouldn't be the bad guys. And like they're in the middle of this debate. And, and so here's the thing. None of those flashbacks are needed. To your point, a lot of it can be can be said in dialogue. The Hiroshima things, like, hey, Festos, why did you just completely abandon helping out into technology and stuff? Well, I don't know. Something happened at this time period. Like, the, here's what you needed to do. I'm going to write a better movie. I'm going to write you a better movie. I'm going to take the same exact concept. I'm going to make it a better movie. Are you ready for this? 
Um, I am ready. All the flashbacks, all the flashbacks effing gone. All right. Thing number one. Thing number two, another wasted actor who is clearly there just to set up a, a Disney Plus series or something, Kit Harrington. You have him come along for the ride yeah. so that every time there's like, hey, what about that? You explain it to him. He's our stand in for the, right, for like, the audience. We don't know what's yes. going on. Hey, you know, you can have shit like Dane be like, be like, did you, or, Athena, are you Athena? Like, Athena, Athena, are you like, yes, that's me. Oh, did you guys help build the pyramids? Yes, we did. Like, you have him be your stand in to fill in the holes. Right. You have Icarus betray the group way earlier. Like, the, the whole deviant storyline is unnecessary in this film. Like, they're just there. So that we have a red herring for them to go after, but Icarus is the true baddie. We get yeah. it, quote unquote baddie, right? Um, so it, you get remove all those flashbacks. You spend the first, I don't know, half hour or so with them as a family. Like have them all get together at, at Selma Hayek's ranch and be like, hey, so what have you been up to? Oh, I'm a curator at this museum thing. You know, this is my boyfriend, Dane. You know, he's. About to find out some really crazy stuff. You want to tell him, right? And like, hey, Festos, what are you doing? I'm married. I have a kid. You know, and you you have them act like a family for a little bit. Then everybody goes away and you have Icarus kill Ajax. And then, boom, next scene, you can have uh, someone go back, find Ajax dead. We have to find out what happened to Ajax. Let's get the band back together. I know you all went to your separate ways, but let's get the band back together and figure this out. And then you find Icarus last, and Icarus is like, yeah, I'm, I did it. And be, this is why I did it. And then for half the movie, he is your person who's trying to stop them from killing the Celestial. You can have whatever MacGuffin in place that you want. We need to do these three things in order to stop the Celestial. And you have Icarus constantly trying to stop them. And then it's really about how do we fight Superman? How do we defeat someone who is all powerful right um and and then you can still have the debate because the the one really good idea which i think all the reviewers i've read have agreed on is the view of these people are gods they're essentially gods and in yeah. some cases they are worshipped as gods at one time or another right what are we as the human race to them right do you do you bother with an ant hill if you like just stepped on pets. it? Do you worry about the ants there? Right. right. So like, what's their mo? And like, you can have that debate. And if Icarus betrays them sooner, you can actually have that debate. Yeah, you literally and just described it, it, Man of Steel. <laughs> like I know, <laughs> right? Yeah, and you know what's funny? You, you know just what's described funny? Man Chloe of Steel. Zhao said that Man of Chloe Zhao said that Man of Steel was an inspiration for this movie, and I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. And and here, but just and, do it better. So, so so complete side note to what you just said. Also, I was shocked at the DC references that were thrown out in this. Oh, look, it's Superman. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why we did that. Oh, you're the you're the Alfred to his Batman. I'm like, all right. Well, I mean, the director said that she wants that this movie exists in a universe that is acknowledged in a pop culture, considering that these people did influence. Culture and storytelling and mythology and superheroes are part of the mythology and the, myth okay. and the mythos. So you open up a whole can of worms by that pop culture being DC. I'm just saying. Because there's plenty of times where Captain America has met Superman and Spider-Man has fought with Batman. Right. Right. There but, are comic books that are DC canon. Sure. That but but Marvel is saying that. Marvel is saying, hey, DC does exist in our universe. They're just comic books. We happen to have real people. Like there's no Marvel comics. It just is that. That's, the, that's very. That's uh, honestly, that's very stupid. Uh, I laughed. I thought it was funny. The um, the thing that you just really hit on though, because you basically just rewrote the movie, <laughs> um, was that. And I made a better movie, did I not? No, I I, th I think that is a better movie. How I, I, again, not the movie that we got. And I I do think that you pointed out the fact again. This isn't about the actors. This isn't about the director directing. It's it's her with her writing. This movie was hurt by its story and was hurt by the timeline and was hurt by, in my opinion, the momentum being undercut with every single arrow style flashback. Where you're like, what did this just add to my story? Right. The the way they went about telling the story because I just rewrote the the movie. The story is the same. You know, I added a little bit of extra to to you know kind of. Get them, you know, build a, that family dynamic, right? But like, and I actually put Kit Harrington in the movie, which you, you, sh I don't know why. Why do we have 
the the guy who's being the videographer for Kingo, but we didn't bring Kid Harrington along. <laughs> Dude, that guy, like, by the way? What was his name? Karan? I, oh, he I, was great. Kar- he Karan. was the Karan. best. He was great. I loved the, the best part. Not the best part, but one of the best parts of the movie is where they break his camera and then he has another, another one, one. And Sprite's like, what are you doing? And he's like, always have a backup. And then he, she breaks that one and he he's has another, another one. <laughs> that man's got another. Him and Ned need to get together. I want to see those two with as man in the chair just run the world. Uh, I, I love it. I thought this that movie, was though, great. This movie does. Uh, and, and you can tell that they're really trying to. It's doing a lot of setup for the fact that we're going into a new phase of Marvel movies and there's new things that are happening and this is your reset up movie. And they crammed not only too much setup, but like nine characters into it. It's too, it's Justice League. It's Justice League. It's too much. This is this is Justice League. This is Jumper. This is I am number four. You know, all of those movies that are like spent their entire first movie world building, but didn't bother to actually develop the story that they were telling. Um, and, and like, frankly, I don't even think the characters are very well developed. I think there's a lot of people who are great actors who are giving pretty flat performances. Richard Madden can act. I've seen Game of Thrones. I've seen Body. Why is he so, I, I don't know why he's so flat in this. I, and, and, and uh, Gemma Chan, who played Cersei, same thing, right? Like, right. So, like, that's my point. Like, I don't buy that any of you care about the Earth enough to completely abandon your prime directive because you haven't done it before. It's been intimated. You've done this several hundreds of times, possibly. Right. You yeah. never cared about any other planet. What makes this planet so special? Is it because Kit Harrington's here? Then you should have brought him. <laughs> 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 like you cared that right, much about him, he should have come with you. No, Brian, she cared so much about him. She got a he got a FaceTime call saying, "Make up with your uncle so we can set up the fact that you're in the white light." Please do your setup work, otherwise I can't have a second movie. But that's the thing; like the second movie is going to be good. It's going to be great. You know why? Because you killed half of the characters, and now you got a smaller cast. You've got a, a, a more tight story to tell, and you know who you kept around? The characters we actually cared about. With the exception of Juig, I wasn't a fan of Juig, but like for the five minutes I got to see Makari, the the deaf speedster, I freaking loved her. Dude, she was wonderful. Can we talk about like, that for a moment? Because that whooped the Flash. Like if I'm DC right now, oh, I'd be she like, was our great. Flash, our movie's going to be great. I'm like no, she was phenomenal. Right? She, she was, was great. Her powers are great. Her acting was great. I love the fact that the characters were signing with her and that like they built that mm-hmm. into it. Like they did a Great fucking job with her character, and I want to see her own movie. Like I want to see her. Hey, here's the I problem. Get down. I only got her for the last fifteen minutes. That's the problem. Maybe yeah. half hour. Like, well, no, because they find her in the that's ship. That's why, like, it's, they it's, find her in the ship, and then they immediately take the ship to go fight Icarus. Right, exactly. After it's, Ic- it's, like, it's they right find her. The Icarus betrays them, and now let's go. Like that's all the time. So I got her for like total screen time, maybe twenty minutes. Because, you know, obviously we, we have so right. many characters we're so trying characters. to focus on. Correct. We're, we're not. And, and so, like, that's my problem. Like, this movie. But hold needed- on. Wait, wait. I, I don't want to get off of her right away. Because we have okay, a Flash ahead. movie. We have a Flash movie coming up, right? And the oh, Flash yeah, has been the done The way she was TV. even portrayed was great, by the way. Right. It's been in TV. It's been in movies. It, it's been in miniseries. It's been in animated. This is probably the coolest way I've seen a speedster shown. Even with her running you know around why? the Earth, it was really dynamic. Right, and that's the thing. And you know why? As as cool – here's the thing. We did something once in X-Men Days of Future Past and everyone loved it. So we recycled it over and over again anytime somebody's supposed to be going super-duper fast. So by the, the time we get the down. Justice League, it doesn't matter. And I don't get right. that sense of scale anymore. The reason this was great is because – like you couldn't keep an eye on her. Like you, like it wasn't right. like oh I don't know what's going on, but like she was on one side of the screen and then she's on the other side of the screen. Like and you got a sense of wow she is fast. And like yeah. if they decided to throw a quick slow mo like bullet time in there, I would have been okay with it because you've already set up the scale of how ridiculously fast and awesome this character is, right? Yeah. Whereas the Flash never did that. Like every yep. single time his powers kicks in. It slows down. So I'm like, okay, I don't get a scale of how quick you actually are. She was handled great. 
I loved it. I wasn't a huge fan of Druig. I, if I were to like narrow it down, like I, I really enjoy Fastos, Kingo, and, and Makari are probably the, my favorites. I would throw Gilgamesh in there if he didn't I die liked, five minutes later. Uh, that's the I thing. Really I really enjoyed him. I really enjoyed Gilgamesh. Not only just the, the manifestation of his power, but the, the he's like, hey, I'm going to take care of her. Like I'm going to like he became that caretaker kind yeah, of style. Like, you know, the, the, he, the warrior that becomes a caretaker. It's a really nice story arc. It it's a beautiful relationship those two have together. Um, you can throw in the Alzheimer's like paradox to it of like, hey, I'm taking care of somebody who's losing their memory. Like it was done really well. Go While ahead. we're talking about completely unnecessary scenes and uh, storylines, whatever like mad cow disease Thena had was completely unnecessary. Do you know how I viewed it? I, I, viewed I know, it as I know a, what it was. Right. It was just unnecessary. I know they, the, the point they were making was um, her hard drive has run out of room. And so she's starting to malfunction a bit because essentially that's what they are. I understand that that was the point. But that didn't give me any revelations into what their past was. The whole scene with Cersei where we get the exposition dump is what gave me that revelation. So yeah. why bother? I, there was I, no point. I thought it was I, a, I thought it was a way to, to nerf her, right? Because if she is such a powerful fighter, right? If you don't have this memory problem and she goes up against somebody, they should win every single time. So you have to nerf this great but warrior. She did. She only won she once. Did. No, when they were in the Amazon, she lost the fight because she went mad. She didn't. She didn't fight the deviant. She was fighting everybody. She didn't else. fight. That's the only thing. Right. And here's the thing. That's what like, I'm saying. If if she was the god of war and you put her up against the deviant, she has to win. She has to. There's there's no there's no reason. No, you, I'll there disagree is, with you She on this doesn't one. have to. She doesn't have to. Just like because Gord, Thor is technically the god of thunder, he loses and gets his ass kicked all the time. Right. Same thing with Thena, right? Like, it's a matter of, hey, to us puny humans, you are a god, but like to a deviant, you're just lunch, right? Like, it, it's, it didn't have to be that way to, to nerf her. I, I thought it was a way that worked, and, and the fact that they did it, I, I was okay with that. I'm not going to die on that hill. Um, I'm not dying on the I know, hill. I'm I know you're not. It was no, I know. I, know. I, I, I get what you're saying. It, I also just kind of want to get down. Unnecessary bullshit. So let's let's talk about the implication. So here's what I think we can agree on. This this movie was a setup movie, right? And it's trying to introduce celestials. It's trying to introduce power we've never seen. And we're, we're really starting to move into a different part of Marvel where the stakes are going to be even higher than before. And this isn't just about Earth and isn't just about our timeline. It's, it's a larger scale. This movie, I don't think, conveyed that as as succinctly and as... Uh, as well executed as they intended to do. But at the end of the day, we get the point. We get what this movie was supposed right. to do. And before you go ahead and you move on to the next topic, because you don't want me to talk about this anymore, because we have a time limit or whatever freaking reason you have for you. Um, I thought we beat a dead horse, to be honest. No, 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 we, we, we have, and, and I'm done. I, I, I just truly want to be very clear. This movie was not terrible. It just wasn't Marvel caliber. Like, this this is being called that, the worst the worst Marvel movie ever. Do you agree with that? Because you've said that. I agree with that. So you think I agree Thor the Dark I'll watch, World. I'll watch Thor the Dark World before I watch okay. this. Because right. here's the thing. At least Thor the Dark World has the decency to be a tight two hour, two hour and 20 minute right. film. And just it, it moves. There's no like, like here's the thing. And, and the only other three hour Marvel movie I'll give you is an example is Avengers Endgame. Like I was in the theater for Avengers Endgame. It did not feel like three hours. And I got to the end of it and I was like, I want more. Yeah. Give me another three hours. I got to like halfway through the film, this felt like three hours. I'm like, are we done yet? Are we like, we were only gotten like two other people. We still have eight more to go. Right. Like it felt because it, it was boring. Yeah. It, it, unfortunately, it was boring. So that's the, that's why this is the worst. All right. So I want to talk about the implications now, Brian. Uh, there are three. There are three. Three of them uh, that I can take away of. Uh, one of them is stupid. So can we get the stupid one? It's a CJ stupid implication. Okay. Oh, I always love CJ stupid. Implications. Canonically, yeah. there is now a huge head and hand coming out of the surface of the Earth. What the fuck? No, it uh, disintegrated that? at the end of the film. Did it? They, they, they yeah. I, I, there's something I, I want to. I because re, I remember thinking the same thing. Right. Okay. Um, and it wasn't a stupid CJ thing because I had the thought too. Right. Um, there is something on a television or something there that said it like, like it went to dust. Okay. But 
You want to know what I noticed oh. that you might have no- not noticed, but I thought you would. Please. Um, if the Eternals prime directive was to help foster humanity to get the population to a certain point so that a celestial could be born. Correct. Wouldn't Thanos have stopped Thank that? Thank you. No. So why did they not get involved with Thanos? Because uh, now it's not just the one celestial. It's all of them across the universe. You've, you've hit my second implication, right? Which is uh, Harry Styles shows up at the end of this movie as uh, what, what do they call him? Star Fox? Well, Eros. His, Eros, well, right? his, his codename is Star Fox, but his name is who, Eros, who yeah. is revealed to be the brother of Thanos. And he's holding the orb, which means that him and Thanos are Eternals. And I know that Thanos may be like a deviant. Uh, he's a titan. titan whatever, he's right? A titan. But, well, he, he was in the MCU. He was born on the Moon Titan. He's not an actual. No, but they they call him the. Mad I, I know titan they call him a Titan. He, what, but but again, because I, I they're brothers, I don't think that's because he was. The born. implications are he had a one Orby thing too in his brain with a directive, right? And and to your point, Thanos was trying to stop. I mean, think about it. If you, you wipe out half life, there goes the celestial argument. He's trying to stop celestials from being spawned and, and taking over the world. And to your point, the Eternals had to stop anything that would do that. So yes, wouldn't they have fought Thanos? Absolutely. But this is because they didn't really know their prime director because Ajax kicked him out when they were at the Mayan temple and said, go, live your life. And he wasn't a deviant. That's why they didn't uh, interfere. I think that is a poor defense, but that I think is what the movie gives us. terrible defense. That's what the movie gives us. Uh, Yes. All right. So uh, let's talk about Harry Styles coming in because there was a, a girl next to me who was swooning over the fact that he is in the Oh, MCU. he looks great. I think he's going to be a wonderful Star Fox. And Patton Oswalt is also in the MCU now. I mean, that man, I feel like he could die tomorrow and he'd be like, yep, I'm good. I'm good. This is a good life. He was on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for like four seasons, too. So. That doesn't count. Remember, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't count as the MCU. Kevin Feige has made it yeah, very we'll, clear we'll, they're trying to wipe that we'll out of everyone's that. mind. I don't think they're going to wipe it. I think they're going to take cherry pick what they like and, and collapse the multiverse. Well, let's let's also face this. No one watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So this is the first time I've I seen it. I watched Agents of F- S.H.I.E.L.D., Of course sir. you did because you're that kind of nerd, Brian. Oh, that's where we got the show's title. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Till oh, now. you're funny. <laughs> so Pat Oswalt is in there. Uh, uh, what do you think about the, introdu- the introduction of, of this character and what are the implications for the future? I mean, I don't know what the implications of the fu- for the future are, but I will say, like, it's got me excited for a second film. Like I said to you, like, the, the, the best part about this film, besides Kamal Nanjani and everything that he said and d- does, is the ending. Right. Is the fact that, like, I can get a second film. Unlike Jumper and I Am Number 4 and all those failed first movies, this will get a sequel. Not just because it's in the Marvel plan, but it is the fourth best opening of 2021. Yeah, uh, it made also, like seventy that million is opening not day. Saying, <laughs> that's not saying that much. I mean, it's not saying much, but given the the current situation that we're in, right, it's pretty good. And and I would have to imagine, even if without COVID, this would have done very well because Marvel. Um, so this will get a sequel, and it makes me excited yeah. for a sequel because I've got smaller cast. I got the people I actually liked and care about. You know, give me a whole movie with Macari and Thena and freaking Harry Styles. Going around space trying to find their friends. I am down for that, yeah. right? And Druig. I, I'm not a huge fan of Druig, but whatever. Like, I'm down for that. You know, and it's – so I'm excited. I, I think, you know, that's where we're going. I think – I'm sure they and the Guardians of the Galaxy are going to intersect at some time. Like, it just – the more cosmic we're getting, right? Exactly. They're going to space. They're going to deep space. The Celestials were even – around before the Big Bang and the Infinity Stones, hence why they weren't affected by the Infinity Stones. We also have a head of a Celestial in the MCU already. So things are going to get deep as to who's killing a Celestial. How do you kill a Celestial? There's there's so many questions about space right now that we're going to. Now, the last implication, the third implication, is back here on Earth. Two times in this movie, or in the MCU, I should say, we have heard pray tale of, of vampires. We heard Camille Nanjani's character talk about it. And then uh, we there was another character in the MC, uh, Oh, uh, in Loki. Um, uh, the TVA is talking about they brought in vampires in, into uh, the TVA before. So at the end credits, which I didn't get to see. I only had to like read about. When Kit Harrington's character, Dane, p- goes for that sword, that voice has confirmed, by the way, by the director, that's, yeah, that's that Bahershal that is Mahershala Ali. Ali who will be playing Blade. So now we've got vampires. We've got 
uh, confirmation of Blade being in the in the MCU and Kit Harrington's character Dane becoming the Black Knight. I believe it's it is. Yes, his okay, character is cool. the Black Knight. Don't ask me anything about him. I don't follow the Black Knight. I didn't even follow the Eternals. Like it's I an read obscure fucking characters. Yep. I listen. Marvel is truly going deep, and you know what? I love it. Like, give me characters I don't know anything about because it gives me twice the reason to be surprised when I find out I love them. Right. But like, like, oh, hey, I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, I read one Eternals mini series that came out in like the early 2000s, and that's about it. And so I don't know anything about Black Knight. I, I barely knew anything about Eternals going into this. Um, but this gets me excited because I know about Blade. A, B, um, they'd never announced when Blade was coming out. No. But I have to imagine if they're teasing at the end of Eternals, it's going to be soon. Pretty fucking soon. Yeah. Which, yes, please. I want it. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Right. Like next, if, if it's if it's next Halloween, I will lose my shit, dude. Be a good like, release cycle. Legit. So like it would make sense. So so Earth is gonna deal with vampires, right? We're gonna have. I would assume if Blade and if Blade made a cameo at, at this part, and they're both sword wielding characters, we're gonna have some. I'm sure Black Knight will be in there. Some team up with them, right? I, I'm sure we'll have something to to come Which, out of that. Who doesn't want to see Kit Harrington sporting his Jon Snow training again and freaking <laughs> kicking ass with a sword? By Why way, not? It was very right? weird to hear Kit Harrington say, I love you, Cersei. Very weird. I was not ready <laughs> for that line of dialogue to I, come out. I didn't even think of that. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> you never that's thought fantastic. of that? The first time they did it, I'm like, that's weird. No. Right? I, that's funny, right? I, I, I really divorce. Uh, I you, you do this. I divorce projects that aren't connected. Correct, like, yes. There's... There's a hard stop. You're like, well, if there's a Cersei here, <laughs> is that the same Cersei in Game of Thrones? Or did, is it a descendant? Did George like, R. R. I'm not Martin that guy. read the internals and that's what made it? And the fact that this goes yeah. on forever, that's why we don't have the rest of the books? Um, I'm, I'm not that guy. So uh, I, I just, I just make laughed. that connection, but that's funny. It was silly. That is it's very funny. Well, silly. I mean, what about Richard Madden saying the same thing? Freaking uh, uh, Rob Stark. Yeah, I, I, uh, he got married to Cersei, and uh, we made exactly. my wife and I turned around and said, "Red wedding, red wedding, red wedding." So like we yeah, we, no. we all enjoyed our jokes. Uh, no, that's funny. Bottom line, uh, let's let's bottom line this movie, right? We, and we we talked at nauseum about what's wrong with it, not wrong with it. People who haven't seen, not people who haven't seen this film, I'm trying to figure out how do you bottom line this movie? Like like how how do you? It was fine. Okay, it was fine. That's how I bottom line this movie. Anybody because um. Uh, my my brother and my father hadn't seen it, uh, and I hope they've seen it before they listen to this. <laughs> um, and and they both asked me like, "What did you think?" I was like, "It's fine. It's not. It's definitely the worst Marvel movie. I'm telling you right now." Yeah. But like in the grand scale of movies, there are a lot worse. There's a huge quantity of worse films. I've seen a couple worse films. This year alone, like it, it's it's fine. Would I watch this before I watch? I don't know Batman and Robin. If we're gonna stick with the superhero motif, yes, I would probably watch this before I watch Batman and Robin. I but like put up against any other Marvel movie, even Thor: The Dark World, which I'm not a fan of. I'm not a huge fan of Iron Man three. I'll watch either of those well before I watch this yeah, film. We we made we made the crack. Am I going to buy it? Yes. <laughs> of course you are. That's, because you, I'm you, not going to not buy a Marvel. But movie. you're the collector, so that that's how that works. Uh, magnificent! Ooh. Magnificent! Anyway, you don't remember? <laughs> this is how the collector yelled magnificent. Magnificent! Oh, oh okay. Uh, you're the collector. Anyway, the collector see, and Guardians of again, the Galaxy. Again, gotcha. dumb parts. Uh, again, bottom line, the way that we t- phrase this at, at the, the top for me was this is a what if a, a what if this is a what if what if Marvel made a DC movie? This is still better than Suicide Squad. This is still better than Man of Steel. This is still better than Batman. It most certainly Superman. is actually better than all of DC stuff. It's still <laughs> better than all that, right? It is the worst Marvel movie. But again, the worst war- Marvel movie is still better than some of the, the better DC movies that are out there. Uh, I will stand firm on the fact that Man of Steel is a bad um, DC movie. But, I liked. I l- listen. If we're going to compare, well, hang on. Well, hold on. Wait, wait, let, me finish, let me finish I, my thing. I let you do yours. Let me do mine. Fine. Even though this is a you did yours by stealing something that I said, but whatever. Even though this movie is a DC, a what if Marvel did DC movie, right? Uh, I still want Marvel to 
take risks. I still want Marvel to mm-hmm. do what they set out to do when they made this movie. Just tighten up your execution. Have diverse cast. Have a great visionary director. Have a lot of people work on a story. Make it something that we've yeah. never seen before. Shoot for that. Because even though you missed on this movie, it's still good that you, we did this. So yeah, and, don't and take this as a sign of bad things. Keep pushing the innovation. And I think we'll have a better MCU because of it. I, I absolutely agree. And, and and here's the one thing I will say. Because like I keep hearing, and, and I have a pair of critics that I respect. And I like, for the most part. But there's the, the one out of the two of them I vehemently degree every, d- disagree every time Marvel comes up because he's he's one of these guys who likes movies like an elephant in a room standing still like bullshit. Is like he this, that. he's in like, the Scorsese camp of Marvel movies aren't actual cinema? Is is he in that camp? No, no, no. I mean, okay. I mean, he's he's actually who very, is it? Who is who like, is the every, mysterious he, critic? The critic's name is Whitney Seibold. Um, and, and where, you know, he makes me think I don't always agree with him. Sure. Uh, he does a podcast called Critically Acclaimed with oh, okay. the guy yeah, I yeah, always yeah, agree yeah. with, which is, uh, William Bibiani. Um, and I know they're listening to this cause they totally listen. Absolutely. To um, absolutely. It's not like they have like a, a very yeah. thriving podcast. Correct. Network. Yep. Um, but my point is every time Marvel comes up, Whitney will be very much about the Marvel formula, the Disney machine, right? And, and he's not wrong, even though, like, I, I don't, I don't always agree with the sentiment. But like, even the different films up to this point have been very in the Disney box, yeah. And this was not this right, is, yeah. And 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 I don't. To your point, I don't want Marvel and Disney to take this as a oh, okay. We gotta keep everything in the box. Back in the right? formula, like, guys. Because, Back in the formula. Exactly. Like, I think it was the right call, right, for 10 years to keep everything very rigid in the box because you were taking a chance on things that people were not considering entertaining at the time. Correct. And But now you got the whole world bought in, right? Yep. You got the, the number one grossing movie of all time. Like, everybody is on board with the Marvel Universe. Now is the time to get a little weird, to get a little out there. Yeah. Which is why stuff like Loki and WandaVision were so good, right? Because they weren't in the Disney mold either. Um, so, y- yes, when it comes to the movies, like, please, like, don't let directors do their thing. Like, keep it in the grand scheme of things. Like, keep it in the, okay, right. everything's connected. You have to hit these certain beats, right? But, like, let them do their own style of filmmaking. I think they let it out a little bit with Taika on Ragnarok. I think they let it but way I think they, out with Taika. I think they really let Chloe Zhao to like do do you do you. you do you yeah and like like I said that's not the problem with this film right. it's a beautifully shot film it's a well directed film it's just the story sucked like next time just get better writers and this would have been great ultimately I also would love to hear what you listener have to say about this we ask you please I want to hear either go to that kind of nerd com comment on this this episode or. Find us on all the social medias, That Kind of Nerd uh, and That Kind of Nerd podcast on Instagram, and tell us what you thought, what you, what you would rank this movie. Uh, the more that we can kind of hear other people's opinions, I think the better we can come out of this, this movie watching experience. All right, listeners. Uh, listen, we absolutely love you. We miss you. I was so glad to sit down with Brian and talk about these stuff today. But I want to hear from you. What are you excited about? You know you can find us on social medias by searching uh, That Kind of Nerd, That Kind of Nerd podcast on Instagram. Thank you so much for making us your walk around your neighborhood, your drive to work, whatever it is we are in your life right now. And we will talk to you next time. Well, welcome to the club because you are back on a nerd. Pop filter. I wasn't going to fall in love again. And then pop goes my heart. Do you remember what movie that's from? I said I wasn't Should gonna I? fall in love. No, I, I know what you said. I don't know what. I don't know what movie that's from. Uh, I will give you one of the stars because it's a, it's it's ten. It, it's it's held up by two people, one of them which is Drew Barrymore. Never been kissed. No. Earlier or later. Uh, later, I believe. Then I don't know. Music and lyrics with co-star. Yeah, I, uh, I've seen a Hugh whole Grant. 15 minutes of that. Hugh? Yes, I do remember Hugh Grant. 
Grant. Same I, I've seen a whole like 10, 15 minutes of that movie. Man, so I would I mean, never you, know what You download the soundtrack. It is Hugh Grant doing the singing. It's not like, oh, they had like someone fill in for his singing voice. And no, it's Hugh Grant. <laughs> Good for him. It's an interesting movie. <laughs> Does he, did he sound awkward the entire time? A little bit, yes. <laughs> like, oh, uh, 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 oh, yes, hello. Uh, I'm going to sing. The, I'm sorry. I wasn't. Sorry. Gonna, no, uh, I, yes, I'm, I, I'm just, I'm sorry. I, no, I, I'm good. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm sorry. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to fall in love. Oh, I wasn't going to fall in love again. Oh, pop. Oh, goes my heart. Oh, uh, sorry. Wasn't going to oh, no. do that. Uh. Anyway. <laughs> I'm a bumbling buffoon. That, that's my charm. <laughs> Even though. <laughs> Even <of> a- though <laughs> thoughts are around butterflies, Jesus, uh, I think Marvel should embrace this film. For with the arms record, wide I open. know it's even flow. I know, I, I, but you missed my setup again. I think Marvel should embrace with arms wide open. Uh, even Thunder though the sunlight, I'm gonna put this in the stinger. That whole exchange. welcome to okay, this that's good. Place. I'll show you everything through awkward flashbacks. Um, it's been a while since I've done. It's that. been a while. Now That's we're done. Your thing. That's now we're done. Thing. We're over. All right. Even though look at this photograph. <laughs> even though this movie is, they all a- sound the same. <laughs> they do. I'm sorry. 